Welcome back to the box office show here on Max Tops Movies. My name is Max Sinnerberg. Today I'm breaking down the box office of this past previous weekend that was the final weekend of March. Then we're also going to break down the total domestic and worldwide box office numbers. I'm also going to preview because it is now April. We're going to preview the whole month of April. So my name is Welcome back to Max Tops Movies. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and ring the bell to notify when my new videos drop here on the YouTube channel. I talk about things, movies, TV shows, box office breakdowns, this this show every single week, as well as new out of theater reactions. So please subscribe, ring the bell. More videos coming out very soon this week. I'll tell you also my plan for the week at the end of this video. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on the box office, the surprise success of Godzilla X Kong and Dune Part 2 still rolling strong? What are your thoughts on the box office? What did you see this past weekend? What are you going to see this upcoming weekend? Also, like the video, the thumbs up buttons. Without further ado, we have a lot to talk about. Let's get into this past weekend's box office. And starting at number one this past weekend was, as you see behind me, Godzilla X Kong from Warner Brothers Discovery, opening to a whopping $80 million opening weekend. Second biggest opening of the 2024 year so far. Two million shy of the other Warner Brothers film, Dune Part 2. This is the biggest opening for the MonsterVerse since the, the movie that kicked off the MonsterVerse 10 years ago, Gareth Edwards' Godzilla film. So, uh, you know, Godzilla versus Kong came out in the thick of the pandemic. Uh, that was, I think that was, yeah, that was the first movie that I saw back in the movie theater during COVID after that year long break of not going to the theater. Godzilla versus Kong was the first movie I saw. So, it was in the thick of the pandemic. Godzilla King of the Monsters and then Kong Skull Island opened pretty, they had better worldwide numbers than they did actually opening. And Godzilla X Kong also did great internationally. It also um, opened very big. It's up to uh, two, it had a $200 million, 202 opening weekend. It helped from another big opening in China. We haven't really seen China bring in that box office success for a lot of blockbusters recently. Um, but Godzilla X Kong did it. And uh, we're on a roll right now with these Godzilla and Kong related things. You had Godzilla minus one, huge success, winning an Oscar. You had Monarch do very solid on Apple TV Plus and now uh, Godzilla X Kong. Now, obviously, the big question is when, uh, you know, what will the drops be moving forward to see if it's really a true success with still 80 million, a whopping opening number that. I don't think a lot of us were expecting. We were expecting maybe in the 60, 70 range, but 80 is a really good number. And Warner Brothers is having the time of their lives right now after Wonka closed out 2023, making around 633 worldwide. Um, and now we're at Dune Part 2 and Godzilla X Kong being the two biggest movies by far here in the States this year. Uh, coming in second place this past weekend was Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. In its second weekend, it dropped a big 65% in its second weekend. Um, it's up to 15, you know, it got to 15.5 million in its second. It's up to 73.2 um, right now domestically. It does not seem that it, you can say 15 million is a good number, but 65% drop on a movie that did not open huge is not great. Um, now it's not awful. If it had a seven in front of it, it would be a disaster. Second weekend drop, it's still in the 60 range. So it's bad, not awful. Uh, but again, this movie does not, it lost a lot, a lot of its screens already for like the premium screens to both Dune Part 2 and now especially of Godzilla X Kong. So, um, you know, the movie does not have great word of mouth. Um, and I expect this movie to probably be on digital in the next month. Uh, Dune Part 2, also from Warner, is still doing great at the box office, dropping 36% its fifth weekend, 11.3 million. So there's a, a 252 million here. Domestically, it's now it's seven million dollars away from passing Wonka worldwide. So two big money makers for Timothy Chalamet and Warner Brothers. That's why he's already signed that deal um, to stay at Warner Brothers for the foreseeable future moving forward. Um, but I, but again, also Zendaya also has a movie coming out from Warner Brothers later in April, which I'll preview at the end of this video. But Doom Part Two is still doing very good. It's shockingly though will be hitting digital in two weeks from today, April sixteenth. So only two more full weekends. It'll be in. Um, in the theater without being available on digital. I'm shocked that Warner Brothers doesn't want it to be at least maybe put it on digital when the summer movie season starts with the fall guy, but they're doing it early, maybe to get ahead. Who knows? But they're making tons of money on this movie. Would be shocked if we don't get a Dune Part 3. Uh, another franchise, Kung Fu Panda 4, is at, is at number four, dropping 37%. It's fourth weekend, 10.3 million 
And it's at 150, really 152 million domestically. This movie is going very strong for Universal and DreamWorks. Uh, easily one of DreamWorks' best openings. This and Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, uh, have been very good openings for a studio that has really struggled. Really, DreamWorks, not Universal Animated because you have the Illumination movies, but the DreamWorks side of animation for Universal has struggled at the box office recently, really, other than Puss in Boots and The Last Wish. So finally, it's back on track with Kung Fu Panda 4. Um, and it's doing very well. It won't catch up to Puss in Boots The Last Wish at the box office, but still by far away its best opening other than that movie in a very long time. And then wrapping up the top five is uh, from uh, Neon Immaculate in its second weekend to gaining eight theaters. It dropped 39%. 3.2 million, 11 million overall for Immaculate. Again, Cindy Sweeney still in the headlines. Obviously, she's been in a lot of things lately. The Euphoria headlines of it being pushed back. Immaculate coming out. Um, it could be a very interesting part of her career because she said that she's very passionate about working a lot of things. She had three movies come out in the last four months with anyone but you, Madam Webb and Immaculate. And uh, with the euphoria being indefinitely looking like halted at the moment um, and the talent is allowed to pursue other projects, it will be an interesting couple of months to see what Sydney Sweeney continues to do. Right now at the domestic box office, so far this year, Dune Part 2 is the biggest movie of the year. 254 million, it's at number one. Kung Fu Panda 4 is at number two with 153. So far, the only films in the $100 million club, but by next weekend, Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, will be joining that list. Um, Bob Marley, One Loves at number three with 96 million. Uh, Godzilla X Kong, just its opening weekend, uh, is at number four. Uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empires at five, Mean Girls six, Beekeeper seven, Argyle eight, Madam Web nine, and Night Swim ten. Uh, overall worldwide this year, Doom Part two, 627 million worldwide. Biggest movie of the year, as I said, it's around $6 million right now behind Wonka. Uh, it should be able to pass that this upcoming weekend worldwide. Uh, Kung Fu Panda 4 is the fourth biggest movie of the year worldwide, 349 right now. So 350 million worldwide for Kung Fu Panda 4, very successful movie. Again, two Chinese films are two, four, and five, and six on the on the charts. Just in its opening weekend, Godzilla X Kong New Empire is at number seven with 202 million worldwide. So that film dominating right now. Uh, Bob Marley, One Love, at number eight with 175 worldwide. The Beekeepers at number nine with 152. And then Ghostbusters Frozen Empire sneaking into the top 10 with 110 million, just passing Mean Girls this past weekend. It is also April, so it's time to refresh everyone and let everyone know that's coming out in theaters for the month of April, the final month of movies before we hit the summer movie season, uh, which is my favorite time of the year to go to the movie theater. So I'm very excited to see uh, that, but that's in May. Let's start. Let's stick to what's coming out in theaters in the month of March. Two movies hitting theaters this upcoming weekend. Uh, Monkey Man, the directorial debut for Dev Patel, to, produced by Jordan Peele. And he's also obviously starring in it. That'll be coming out as well as The First Omen, which has been heavily promoted. Another non-horror film hitting the multiplexes this upcoming weekend. Then moving on to April 12th, you have uh, the big movie of Civil War, the fourth film from Alex Garland. Um, this movie's getting... It's going to be in the headlines for sure when this movie hits theaters. It's going to be very divisive, very strong opinions. Um, Alex Garland always causes that. But with this and the political climate that we're in, I am very scared, nervous, but also excited to see how people respond to uh, Garland's movie. He's already been coming out saying that this might be the last movie he ever directs. We'll see. Um, but Civil War hits theaters on April the 12th. And that starts Kirsten Dunst, Jesse Plemons, Wagner Mora, uh, Nick Offerman in the movie. Uh, moving on to April 19th, you have a couple movies hitting theaters. You have The Ministry of Un Un Gentlemanly Warfare. That's the new Guy Ritchie movie uh, that stars Henry Cavill and Alan Richson and Isaac Gonzalez, Henry Golden, Carrie Elways. Um, Guy Ritchie always has new movies coming out, boom, 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 all the time. Um, and this is his new one, second time teaming up with Cavill, first time since Man from Uncle. And then you also have the horror film Abigail hitting theaters. That comes from the director's of the last two screen movies and Ready or Not. Uh, you have Dan Stevens, Giancarlo Esposito, Catherine Newton, and then obviously Angus Cloud and Melissa Barrera in that film. That will be hitting theaters as well on April 19th. And then we're wrapping up the month on April 26th with Zendaya's new film, Challengers, starring as well as Mike Feist and Josh O'Connor. 
uh, directed by Luca Guadagnino, who obviously has done Spiria, Bones and All, and Call Me By Your Name. So it's a pretty busy month here in April. These are no real blockbusters hitting the theaters, but a lot of movies that have time to make some dough in the month of April before the fall guy kicks off the movie season on May 3rd. So let me know your thoughts. What are you going to see in the month of April? Let me know in the comment section, and I'll see you guys soon.